How much steam do you need? Can you calculate how much steam is required to sterilize your mushroom substrate? What is your boiler steam output? Can you make your mushroom sterilization system more efficient? Most likely, in this video we're going to look at the energy output of my boiler here. We're going to look at the efficiency of my new sterilization tank here. And we're going to determine just how much energy or kilojoules of heat we need to heat up my mushroom substrate and keep it at that temperature. I think anyone can look at their mushroom uh, sterilization system and try and make them more efficient. I think it's, uh, it's almost a responsibility of us mushroom growers to do this. One, because it's better for the environment. And two, of course it's better for your wallet. You're spending uh, less cash on uh, energy, which is getting converted um, into heat to sterilize your substrate. So let's crack on. Boilers, how do they work? Well they turn electrical energy into heat energy through a heating element which is mounted at the bottom here. These electrical elements that are mounted in here are pretty efficient. Now read online that they're about 90% efficient, but I actually think you can get more than that. And I actually think you can push these up to about 95% efficiency. That means that all the watts you're drawing through the wall, all that electrical power, can be turned into heat energy of about the same amount. Now when water is turned to steam, it undergoes a phase change. So it turns from the liquid to the gas. Now this phase change requires an immense amount of energy. To heat water up from 0 degrees to 100 degrees, it takes about 419 kilojoules. To then turn that 100 degree water into steam, it takes about 2,257 kilojoules. That's about 5.4 times the amount of energy to go from 100 degree water to steam than it takes to turn 0 degree water into 100 degree water. Now that's a lot of energy in steam. It's this energy that we are pumping here into our sterilization tanks to heat up the substrate and get it sterilized. My element in here is 2.5 kilowatts, which translate to about 9,000 kilojoules of energy per hour, or about nine megajoules per hour. Now remember we spoke about our efficiencies of these uh, energy elements in here. So we're not actually going to get 9,000 megajoules, sorry, 9 megajoules out of this, or 9,000 kilojoules. We want to times that number by about 0.95 or 95%. And that gives us around 8,550 kilojoules. Now that's a good amount of heat energy coming out of one uh, 2,500 watt element. So 8,550 kilojoules is our target. That's our target for the perfect setup. And that's the number I am chasing. 8,500 and 50 kilojoules per hour. For this test, I've added a fresh uh, insulation wrap to my boiler here. I've sat it on top of some new PIR board. You can actually see it's leaking. Uh, you see this amount of steam coming out. Now this is inefficiencies. So all that means is that you can feel the energy coming off that, that's releasing kilojoules just out into the atmosphere. And that's kilojoules which aren't going through this pipe and getting plumbed, there it is there, getting plumbed out into my tank there. That's what I don't want but I can't really solve that, this, uh, this boiler is just a bit too old now um, and that is well, one of the reasons I'm replacing it. We want to make this as efficient as possible to chase that number. Since I, I took a measurement from this yesterday and I took a measurement again today and it has actually uh, increased its efficiency by a significant margin. So it is really worth insulating your boilers if you're using one the more the merrier. But I'll show you how I take a reading from this. Boilers are measured in kilograms per hour of output. So a six kilowatt boiler might have around, let's say eight kgs of water output per hour. So that's eight kgs of water, it's turning to steam and it's pumping out. Now remember we know the energy output of steam. And so if you know the output of water, then you're gonna know the output of energy. Now we can figure out the water output from this with a uh, very simple solution. So to figure out our weight in kilograms per hour coming out of my boiler, the easiest method to do is to get a uh, container here, put it on a scale, fill it with cold water. And we're going to want to get that water to about one litre. 9.99, look at that. There's now one litre of water in here. Our next step is to get a phone. And what we're going to do is we're going to start pumping water into the, pumping steam into the water, and we're going to measure it for one minute. Now this is going to create a series of sort of like tiny explosions as that water for that boiling steam 
comes down the pipe, hits that cold water, it's going to instantly condense a bunch of steam. And that's going to cause the water level to pump up and down, but it's slowly going to add mass to this water here. And that's what we're going to measure. We do this for one minute. Now remember I said the energy held in steam is substantial. This water in here heats up at a rapid rate. Much faster than adding 100 degree water to it. Because you're adding steam, and the steam holds so much more energy, it causes this water here to heat up much faster. So I can feel that's already getting quite warm. There we are, we have added 48 grams, or 48 mils, grams and mils, same thing, of water to that one litre in one minute. Now to figure out our litres per hour coming from my boiler, all we do is go 48 times 60, 2.88 litres of water per hour. So we've got 2.88 litres of water per hour coming out of my boiler. Now that's coming out as steam. And remember I said we know how much energy is held in steam. So from that we can calculate the energy output of this boiler. All we do is go 2.88 times the energy held in steam, which is 2767. And that gives us 7,706 kilojoules of energy per hour coming out of my boiler. Now remember I was aiming for that target of 8,550 kilojoules per hour. And we're not quite there. We're at 7,700 which means we are losing around 800 kilojoules. Now that 800 kilojoules is efficiency that I want to find because instead of losing that 800 kilojoules to the atmosphere, I mean you can see the steam coming off, right? So there's bloody half of it there. I'd rather that 800 kilojoules be going into my tank here because this tank takes a lot of energy to heat up. It's an energy monster. This just consumes all of these kilojoules we pump in and it does that for hours and hours. It'll eat this up until it gets to temperature. So we have our boiler output in kilojoules per hour. The next thing we're going to cover off is the efficiency of my steam tank here and just how much energy per hour that vents. Because if we're pumping in 7,700 kilojoules per hour and that's venting 7,700 kilojoules per hour, it's pointless. We're never going to heat it up. So we need to figure out how much energy we are losing from that tank. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Now I know what you're thinking. There's a bloody great big hole in my calculations. There is. Right, so the water coming out of our tap here is actually already at 20 degrees, which means it's already got about 84 kilojoules of energy per litre inside the water. Now that's 84 kilojoules per litre that my boiler down there isn't actually doing. And if you remember, we're getting 2.88 litres of water per hour. So you have to times 84 by 2.88. And that gives us about 242 kilojoules. So the calculation we did, we were getting 7,700 kilojoules out of our boiler, is not actually that accurate. You have to minus 242 kilojoules off that. And that leaves us with 7,464 kilojoules worth of energy we are getting out of my boiler there. And we talked about my target of about 8,500 kilojoules. It means my boiler is just not as efficient as I thought it was. And I think we can get another 1,000 kilojoules out of it. Maybe not that boiler, but hopefully the new one I'm having manufactured. I want it to be as efficient as possible. So where is this efficiency going to come from? How am I going to get those extra kilojoules out of my boiler? Well the key is insulation and mechanical efficiency I suppose. You need it insulated well and you've got to make sure it's not leaking any steam. Now this isn't insulated that well and it does leak steam. But we can calculate just how much energy we are losing through poor insulation. It's quite a simple calculation. We know the thermal conductivity of the insulation. Thermal conductivity is measured in our watts per square meter Kelvin, so we know that. And we know the thickness of the insulation, so that's good. We know the surface area we need to insulate, and we know the temperature on the inside and on the outside of the device. Now with those numbers we can calculate how much wattage worth of energy we are leaking. So for this calculation we're actually going to do it in two steps. I have got PIR board on the bottom of this insulation down here, 
and this EVA foam on the side. Now this board at the bottom is a lot more thermal efficient. It's uh, 0 0.022 watts per square meter Kelvin, whereas this EVA foam here is only 0 0.038, I think it was, or 36. So we'll calculate this in two steps, the bottom and then the rest, the rest of the area of the uh, cylinder. To calculate the bottom, we go the, uh, the thermal conductivity, which is 0 0.022, times the thickness of the insulation here, which is 0 0.05 meters. We then times that by the area, which is 0 0.16, and then we times that by the temperature on the inside, which is 100 degrees centigrade, minus the temperature on the outside, which is 18. Now when you calculate that, you get 5.77 watts. So it's 5.77 watts of energy moving at the bottom of the cylinder. Now we can transfer that into kilojoules, um, that equals 20.8 kilojoules. So we're losing 20.8 kilojoules per hour of heat through the bottom of this cylinder. The reason I'm doing the two calculations separate is just simply because the insulation on the bottom versus the sides is different. So to calculate the rest of the boiler, we go the thermal conductivity, which is 0 0.0. 38 uh, for this material here, it's an EVA foam, times the thickness which is 20 millimetres or 0 0.02 metres. We then times that by the area which is 0 0.79 metres square and we times that by the temperature on the inside 100 degrees minus the temperature on the outside 18 degrees and that gives us a result of 123 watts. So we're losing 123 watts of energy just through the insulation. We can convert 123 watts into joules, and it's about 442 kilojoules. So when you add the 442.8 uh, uh, kilojoules with the 20.8 kilojoules from the bottom, you get 464 kilojoules. So we're losing 464 kilojoules of energy just through the insulation. Now remember we had already calculated uh, how much energy we were getting um, out of the pipe here, and that was 7464. So if you add 464 to 7464, you get 8,110 kilojoules. Now that's fast approaching that 95% uh, percent efficiency we wanted of 8550. But where is the rest of that energy? Well, you've got places that are going to leak it, like the pipe here. You're going to leak energy through that there. These handles, I mean, we've got big handles, metal handles sticking out the side, energy coming out of there. We have steam which leaks through the top. There's more energy. We've got the, the metal input here, which attaches to the hose. I mean, that's going to suck energy out of it. So it's all these little things which decrease the efficiency of the boiler here. This boiler's only just starting to run now. It's just under steam. And it's a lot of these little efficiencies that I really can't solve. To put it into perspective of how much insulation matters, if we were to cover the whole thing with this 50mm PIR board, it would only be emitting about 34 watts of energy. That's 123 kilojoules. So if we covered the whole thing with this board here, we would only lose 123 kilojoules. That means we'll, we'll get an extra 340 kilojoules of energy out the pipe there. It's inefficiencies like these that are the reason that I'm going to get rid of this and I'm getting a new boiler made. A new boiler that doesn't have as much surface area, that's easier to insulate, that seals all the steam in so it's more mechanically sound. And after we do this, we should have more kilojoules coming out the pipe there. Because in the end, that's what we want. We need kilojoules out this pipe. Just how much energy do we need coming out the end of that pipe? Well, I reckon when this thing is full, it's going to eat about 100 megajoules, probably more. Now, 100 megajoules is a lot of energy. And it's a lot of energy that we need that little wee boiler that's only running on one 250 watt element to do. It's got a big weight on its shoulders, but I believe in it. In the next video, we're going to cover off just how much our energy this thing here can eat, this tank. It is hungry, it is thirsty. You pump energy in, you pump and you pump and you pump energy into this, and it eats it all up. So we'll figure out just how big its appetite is. I would have put it in this video, but I've uh, run out of time. It takes a while to film YouTube. So if you have found anything useful here, please hit that like, please hit that subscribe. It helps me out too. And I'll see you when we figure out how to quench this thing's thirst.